Good morning, everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Helena Nett. I'm the Executive Director with the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce. And it, it, we uh, are really excited that we have the opportunity to put these, uh, you know, these webinars on to connect the business community with what with the programs that are out there through agencies to grow your business. Uh, Manly Lynn and the Greater New York Chamber have been, you know, uh, not only have we developed a great friendship, but it, it, we have to, you know, compliment Manly for putting herself out there, giving us the time for these webinars, for giving you the information on how to sell to the federal government, how to access capital, which is coming up. So uh, Manly, we so appreciate your time putting, you know, giving the businesses the information is so important to grow people's businesses, but also to grow the economy. And we, like I said, hands off to you that you take the time to do this. I would be remiss to say one thing, and those who are listening, it's really important to partner up. Manly Lynn is gonna go over that with you. But we host a lot of online and in-person networking, and we stress this all the time. So for those who are joining us for the first time, if you are in a business and you attend a networking event or you meet someone I call in your lane that is similar to you, don't look at that person as your competition. That person can be your ally in getting a federal government contract or you know partnering through mbwe contracts so man lee is going to go over that but if you have any questions about that you know get involved with the chamber we can partner you know you with someone similar in your lane to help you uh provide that information to get a contract so i wanted to put it out there but the next time that you meet someone that you know is doing, if you're in software development and doing software development, look at that person as a potential client for you to get more business. So Manly, I just want, we talk about this all the time and people don't realize it, but I'm gonna let you take over right now. Everyone, this is being recorded. It will be on Chamber TV. There is a chat, put your questions in the chat. And then as when Manly finishes, we will go over the questions in the chat. Hard stop at 11, so make sure that you put your questions in so we can get to it at the end. Manly, go ahead. Thank you so much again for what you do. Thank you, Helena. Um, thank you, Great New York Chamber of Commerce for the opportunities. Helena is 100% correct. Uh, you come not just listen to me, uh, you should network with the business that you can team up for the government contracting. So let's go to the PowerPoint. A lot of information, so you will need this PowerPoint. Uh, first thing, just want to remind you, SBA, we provide one-on-one -on -one counseling. Uh, I provide information, but you will need a lot of uh, you know, hand-on uh, assistance. So please contact our uh, resource partner. So there is a link here. Uh, you can choose the you know, school or small business development center or women business center and also Community Navigator and Veterans Business Outreach Center for one-on-one -on -one free uh, you know, assistance. For capital, uh, no matter what stage of your business, especially you know, if you're ready to do the business with the government, you need uh, financially strong enough. So SBA have different kind of financing program. Uh, we are going to have a uh, Meet the Lenders event again, so uh, you will receive the information from Helena. Um, look forward to seeing you, so you can meet um, more than, I think, eight lenders, uh, so you can ask the questions. So today I'm going to talk about the contracting, but I also want to remind everyone that SBA provides disaster assistance. I hope we don't need that anymore, but you know, um, hurricanes and nature, uh, they play their role. So uh, you know, if um, there is a disaster, SBA is here to help you. So why we encourage you to get federal government uh, contract? 
you know, U.S. government is the biggest buyers in the whole world. So every year spending more than $500 billion. When last year actually spent more than $700 billion to buy almost everything from paper clip to aircrafts. And not just the items, products, we also need uh, services. So if you are in the research, in education, you know, marketing, um, you know, even accounting assist, you know, the programs, actually uh, government have a lot of um, needs for your services. So there are different, um, you know, uh, acquisition way. The first one is full and open competition. The second one uh, is a small business set aside. So that's why uh, SBA is here to help small business. So for small business between you know, $3,500 and $250,000, all the federal government agency, their purchase more than 23% have to buy from small business. 11% have to buy from small disadvantaged businesses. Later, I will explain you know, all the requirement and definition and how to certify for those uh, special set aside program. 3% for hub zone businesses and 3% for service disabled veterans and 5% for women owned business. So if you are a minority women owned business, you have 16% set aside for you, you know, for $500 billion, a big pie. Um, and if you are located in a hot zone, you add 3% more. So that's why we really encourage you to learn and to build good relationship with the agency that need your product or services. And 2023, we hope everyone can get, you know, the government contacting. Also, number three, sole source. I will explain that later because not everyone um, you know, have that advantage. You have to be certified for certain programs uh, to be the sole source. So there are some myths about federal government contracting. Uh, even I remember 15 years ago when I held a webinar and seminars that time, you know, um, most of our big business come to you the events because you know they need to have a one person a designated person to deal with the government content they search every day you know everywhere to see what programs they are but now we have internet and also we have automatically uh, matchmaking program so you know it's much much easier to find opportunities and also some business, they're afraid that, you know, even they already deliver their words, um, their items, you know, or services, but they didn't get paid. For federal level, that's, you know, by law, federal agency have to pay you within 30 days of invoicing. I know um, the local government, sometimes, you know, they rent out the budget, um, then they don't pay or just pay partial to the contractor. But for federal level, um, it will not happen. So you know that's why we really encourage you to expand your business to the government context. It's a huge market, but you need uh, to get ready. So the first one, does the government buy what you sell? I think a lot of you have that question in mind. So. Uh, next slide, I have three websites for you to find those opportunities to, uh, to see which agency they bought something similar to your product and services um, and bought from whom. So you can learn uh, who will be your potential customers and also whom uh, you know, your com competitors are. So you can learn from them. The second one, do you have the federal contracting experience? Um, I think many of you don't have yet. So um, need to learn and also um, encourage you uh, to get city, state, counties, um, procurement, you know, contract first. So you know how to do um, business with the government and also on your capability statement, it will be better that you have some experience working with government. 
also you need to show you have the cash okay your cash flow uh, is good you can uh, complete the job uh, enough uh, inventory okay so that's working capital to keep your business running well also are you capable of fulfilling government's contract means can you do the jobs okay and the last one do you know where to find those opportunities so this get ready for that. Uh, you have to know what agency buy, can buy from you and find your niche. Maybe you find you know, several agencies, they bought something similar to your product or services before, but you have to see you know, which one is really uh, your niche and your priority because take times you know, uh, to, you know, to negotiate with them and do the bidding. So you have to choose your priority. See which one is most uh, popular uh, you know, for you and possibility for you and for the agency to win the contract. Um, understand the areas of government spending. Next slide will show you that. And know your competition and their contracts. So uh, Helena just emphasized, uh, later I would um, just show you a slide. Uh, government allowed small business team up, team up to get a big contract. So it's you know, very important that you know some of the business in your industry. Uh, so you can work together to get a bigger contract. Okay, this is, uh, you know, this is the information you should bring away with you, take away from you today. There are three websites you should go to um, to find the market. Number one is same.gov, okay? Same.gov right now, they, com they uh, combined all the uh, acquisition government contacting website together. So you can just go to same.gov to to see all the government contracting uh, information, assistance, you know, and uh, they have the federal business opportunities in part of it. Any government agency, if they have purchased more than $25,000, they have to post there. So that's where you can find opportunities, uh, which agency bought what, um, and right now what they are looking for and which um, you know, business they bought from in the past. So you can get a lot of information uh, to learn about that agency and also about your competitor. Maybe it can become your partner in the future. Number two, um, every penny of the federal government spend, um, they list on usaspending.gov. So you can find you know, every penny that government spend in what um, and from which uh, business. Number three, you know, um, for government agency, they have forecast the budget plan. So they can um, plan two years later, three years later, five years later. So there are uh, forecasts for different agency. So if you're not ready now yet, then uh, you can go to those websites uh, to find out the opportunity and get ready. Um, start to you know, learn the rules and also you have to uh, make good relationship with those agencies. I will go to the details later uh, because a lot of business, they came to me. Uh, they say, I already, I already um, you know, uh, certified for many years, but I didn't get any contract yet. So usually I ask them, I said, did you do the marketing? And um, they, they were surprised. They said, oh, we didn't know we have to do the marketing. Yes, you need to, because it's very competitive. So what governments are looking for? They are look, they prefer, okay. Of course, uh, some startups ask me, uh, is, it's possible for them uh, to get contract. If government agency really need your products or services, yes, okay. Even you are a startups, like um, you know, during the pandemic, they need a lot of services or the products. Even the startups, they can get contract. 
that most of the time, government prefers to work with well-established and reliable business because they, they want to find a good partners, vendors to help them to reach their goal, uh, to get good product and services. Okay? So um, in the beginning, uh, business need to spend time to find those um, agency need your product and services. Also, uh, you have to show that you have enough cash flow to sustain your business and to complete the jobs. So, um, so a lot of business, I, I told them, uh, make sure that your financial statement looks nice. Okay, so work with your accountant is very important. Then uh, e-commerce is savvy because now, you know, uh, government try to protect all the, you know, if data information, especially the part of defense, uh, you need to show the cybersecurity, uh, you, you need the requirement, okay? So now I'm going to go to the five um, basic requirement. The first one, um, I, I believe some of you heard that you need to get dance number, you know, to register uh, on the same .gov. Uh, in 2022, that's a new uh, era. So you don't need uh, to get dance number. You go to same.gov, you register there, they will assign you a number. They call a unique entity identifier. So you don't need to work with you know, dance number anymore. And also uh, you need to have the correct next code, okay? Uh, the next code is the industry you know, classification uh, code. So you have to really get the correct one because now computer do the automatically uh, matchmaking. So uh, if you didn't find, didn't list your correct next code, you won't get that notification that some agency need your product or services. The second requirement is meet the size standards. You know, uh, have to be uh, the small business by SBA's definition. Okay, so generally speaking, if you are a manufacturing business, then uh, if you have fewer than 500 employees, you are a small business. And non-manufacturing business depends on your annual income. Uh, you no, know, but generally speaking, we say $7.5 million, but depends on the industry. For example, for a construction company, can start from you know, uh, $7.5 million up to $32.5 million because different kind of um, you know, um, construction company. So please, um, if you're not sure, please go to our website uh, here. Yeah, you, know, you can see the table of size standards, and also you can contact our uh, all, you know, standards office to make sure you're qualified. Number three, now uh, register with SAM. So SAM is a system for award management, and uh, it's a database that all the federal government agency, if they're looking for a vendor, they will go here. So you have to be in that database uh, to do business with the government, okay? So you can go to the same.gov and just upload your own information. Uh, you know, it's like a resume for your business. So please, um, maybe you can see, check other, uh, especially those business in your same, in your same industry. Uh, to see what they put there. So please put an uh, accurate and descriptive terms. So, you know, when it's like elevator pitch, uh, you know, in writing. So please make sure uh, you have the correct information and good information and something outstanding. Uh, this is very important. Also the last one. So you can get a cage code you will need that for a lot of certification and uh, for the dating too. So register with SAM and now uh, annually actually, um, they will notify you. You should go to check 
uh, if you need update your information and also maybe see if that information is still there. Number four, maintain compliance. Okay, you're working with federal government. So you have to comply with all the regulation. Number five, um, most of the government agency right now are required, you know, you have the cybersecurity, um, you know, equipment or meet the standard, especially Department of Defense. So Department of Defense develop a project spectrum. Uh, it's a free platform. So please, uh, you can go there um, to learn and also if you need to get certified. So uh, please visit there. Now I'm going to talk about uh, certification. So I already mentioned that percentage set aside for you know, different business. So um, how to certify? Very important for you to, um, to certify in advance. Um, do not wait until you see a contract opportunity and you just want to certify it. Sometimes it's too late, especially for 8A certification, it needs uh, at least seven months to complete that uh, because the, a lot of document requirements. So you uh, please uh, take time to certify first. So I think um, this year, um, Today's event, um, I will talk about the certification. I really challenge all of you uh, to start certified, okay? Um, then uh, you can um, start find opportunities uh, to get it. I really hope 2023 will be a procurement year for everyone. So there are three um, certifications here. The first one called 8A, uh, this is a turn. If you participate in those procurement events, a lot of people will ask you, say, are you 8A certified? So what's 8A certification? Uh, the formal name is uh, socially and economically disadvantaged certification. I will go to the detail. Um, and the women on small business and the hub zone, uh, those three certifications, all the owners own more than 20% of the uh, business have to be US citizen because this is a federal program. And 50, more than 51% ownership have to be unconditional and direct. It's not under any another business entity. We know um, some big company, you know, they have, they, um, it, it pretend they are uh, the umbrella and under them, they have a lot of small business. This is the only time that a lot of business, they want to pretend they are small business. So that's why, and what does that mean? Control, what 51%, okay, unconditional and direct. Uh, control means, you know, the owner um, is the one or are the ones make the long-term decision and manage the day-to-day -day operation. And the business have to be for profit. Okay, nonprofit organizations uh, can get grants from government, but it's different. This is for government contracts, so it's um, for 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 profit organization, and uh, cannot be uh, you know have suspended or barred um, by any government agency. Um, so if you have you know anything that especially uh, with IRS, you have to clear that. Uh, before you pursue your government contracting. And also uh, you need to uh, have a place of business in the US, cannot be uh, located in a foreign country. So uh, next code, I already uh, mentioned that. So this is a detail. And um, actually on your tax uh, forms, um, form 1040, you can find that number. So make sure it's correct. Um, I list here required document um, because when you go to the certification, you can certify by yourself. The link I already provide you, certify.sba.gov. You can certify by you, but please um, have all the documents ready uh, with you when you go to the computer. 
Otherwise, you know, um, you cannot finish that. You can usually you cannot complete that just with you know two hours or one day. Uh, you need to have all the information with you. And this is um, the document. Uh, you know, depends on your business structures here. Uh, the first certification, um, I'm going to talk about the 8 a certification. The formal name of it is socially and economically disadvantaged uh, you know, certification. So this is the nine years program. During the nine years, um, SBA will help you. Like in our office, we have a team, uh, help the 8A certified uh, business, uh, if we know any you know, contract opportunities, we'll contact you. Uh, and also, um, I know sometimes I even can represent you to negotiate with, um, with the agency for the contract. So during those nine years, uh, we will hold your hand. After nine years, we say you graduate. Uh, you already know how to you know, get a contract by yourself. Uh, but this one uh, you need to have in business, uh, have been in business at least for two years to apply for it. And I already mentioned um, the 8A certification normally need more than seven months. So please uh, collect all the documents and start it um, after you already in business uh, two years. The ad advantage of the 8A certification uh, the first one called set aside. We already mentioned this is uh, originally only have five percent set aside, but from 2022, um, SBA raised up to 11 percent. 11 percent of the government contract set aside for you if you certify for 8A. The other advantage is sole source contract. There is another rule called rule of two. So pretend I'm the purchaser for my office. Uh, if you approach me, you know, you have good product and your price is reasonable. Um, I cannot buy from you. I need to have at least two business uh, compete and I can choose one. But if you are 8A certified, then you, know, you can be the sole source contract. So that's very powerful. You can contact the office, let them know you are 8A certified, um, you know, and then um, if your product is good, um, they can buy from you. And other um, advantage you know, can help you uh, to get a business opportunity specialist to help you navigate federal contracting and also can form joint venture. Okay, later, um, I think I already mentioned you can team up uh, team up uh, to get a common contract. So that, um, and also you can receive other management and technical assistance, um, uh, different uh, training uh, for government contract. So if you're qualified, okay, please certify as early as possible. I mentioned, you know, this is, uh, you have to be in business in two years, but uh, some situation, you can wait the two years rule, okay? So at least here for you, you can check it. So 8A is one time only, okay? Nine years, one time only. Uh, there is no renew, there is no extension. That's why also um, please make sure that you are ready, okay? Don't waste uh, the nine years. Um, so do you have the capacity capacity to deliver on federal contract means you you have the ability to complete the jobs okay do you have sufficient cash flow your business have to be you know like financial strong enough and do do you have demonstrate capability okay like means in the past uh, you know do you have a big customers or any gas government uh, clients that can show you know how to do business with the government also, uh, you have to demonstrate success for past performance. So later I will show you uh, to how to prepare a capability statement. That's like a resume for your business. Okay. Uh, are you open to advice on growing your business? 
uh, we have uh, PTEC, you know, Small Business Development Center, uh, schools can help you and Women Business Center. So you need to talk to those uh, experts uh, to plan in advance. So this is, um, I already mentioned that only one time use of eligibility, only nine years for the um, 8A certification. Okay, now we look at what's the qualification. So the, uh, because the socially and economic disadvantage. Uh, so if you are one of the following five groups, you are socially disadvantaged business. If you are Black American, Asian Pacific American, Hispanic American, Native American, or subcontinent Asian American, then you are qualified for socially disadvantaged. But even you are not one of the groups that I just mentioned, if you can uh, show, demonstrate, you have experienced bias of a chronic and substantial nature, you can uh, be qualified for that. But you need to provide a lot of native of all those um, you know, the facts. Uh, for the economic disadvantage, you have to show your past three years, total assets, net worth, and personal income. There are limitations here. So you have to meet those. Uh, but good things that you know, your personal income or net worth doesn't count um, your, your residential property. Okay, so this is a totally business. So um, just understand the numbers that actually you're qualified for. Uh, I also put here, uh, so the, all the documents you need to um, make the applying for 8A easier, okay? Uh, this is, a, I already showed you before, but let me just put it again. Now I'm going to talk about uh, women-owned small business and economic disadvantaged women-owned small business certification. Okay, you can see here there are two groups. One is women-owned, one is economically disadvantaged women-owned. So uh, totally have more than 700 max codes um, can uh, qualify. So you can go to the website, but I know, I, I know that most color uh, already cover most of the industry. So just make sure um, your, your next codes in those uh, database. And the women have to, uh, at, you know, the company have to at least 51% owned and controlled by women who are US citizen. Can be one woman or more than one woman, okay? But uh, the women have to be the real one, manage the day-to-day -day operations and also make long-term decisions. I think um, certified for the women-owned business, okay? and this is an economic disadvantage women-owned business, also have the um, limit limitation, okay, the maximum amount for net worth for your gross income and for your personal assets. But, um, you know, uh, I mentioned that you can certify by yourself if you're um, the 8A, the hub zone, you know, and, but unfortunately, women own small business, you cannot certify by yourself anymore. Two years ago, um, Congress, they found out a lot of uh, so-called women-owned business, they are not really women-owned, okay? Because they, they are not the one manage the day-to-day -day operation and make the long-term decision. They just, on the paper, they own more than 51%. So Congress say that's a fraud. So um, now they change women-owned small business you can apply, you still apply uh, online, certified.sba.gov, but uh, you have to get approval from SBA. You cannot certify by yourself, but you can apply uh, by yourself, okay? Also, SBA provides third-party certification through the, you know, the four organizations here, but I just want to make it clear, they charge a fee um, and, you know, SBA will not pay for you. You have to pay uh, the, the fee. 
So try to do that by yourself. It's not that difficult. If you have all the documents, it's not difficult for you to certify as a women-owned business. Later, I will show you who can help you. And uh, SBA will also uh, accept certification from US Department of Transportation. They have a DBE program uh, or you are AA participant, uh, they can accept that, but you have to apply. Okay, then the next one is HubZone certification. Okay. HubZone official name is historically underutilized business zone. So there is a map, you can see um, the map link um, at the bottom of this slide. Uh, you get there, click on and enter your address. They will tell you right away if you are in the hub zone. So there are two requirements. The first one is your principal office have to be, you know, have to be located in the hub zone. So you just enter the address on the map, you can find out. The second requirement is more than 35% of the, um, the employees uh, have to live in the hub zone. Doesn't have to be in the same hub zone as your business, um, any hub zone nationwide, okay? And what's the principal office? Doesn't have to be the headquarter. For example, if you are a New York uh, business, then you get a contract in Florida. Of course, you will hire a lot of workers in Florida, especially construction company. So the Florida office will be your principal office. So it's the greatest number of the firm's employees. In some businesses that say, oh, 35% have to live in a hub zone. It sounds difficult. Uh, the good news is um, they count the employer as the workers too. So for example, if you have one employee, so either you or the employee lives in a hub zone, you have 50%, okay? So it's not that difficult. So um, when you maybe hire workers, uh, you can pay a little bit attention to where they live, okay? Um, hub zone is very important. You can see here, it's not in the poverty. A lot of people say, oh no, my, uh, the place uh, my office located is a you know, good area. This is Manhattan. You see even next to Times Square, there is, a, there is a hub zone area here, okay? So don't guess, just go to the, this is Brooklyn, this is the Queens, and this is the Bronx. Okay. So what's the advantage of the hub zone certification? I want to uh, just emphasize one thing, the 5%, 11% you know, for women, for everything, hub zone, have 3% set aside. But this is the only goal that government never reached. So all the government agency are looking for hub zone certified business, okay? So please, and the certification I think is the easiest one compared to 8A or others. So please certify if you are uh, eligible for the hub zone. What's, uh, what are the advantages? You no, know, of course, the 3% never reached the goal. That's a good big one. Also can be source source, okay? Mean the same as 8A. So um, if your product is needed by the agency, even just one um, company, okay? You approach to the business, uh, to the agency, they can buy from you. And the third advantage is you can get a 10% price evaluation preference. What's that mean? You know, the procurement officer usually, um, when uh, business bid for the contract, um, they have to choose the good quality one, the best quality one. But if there are two business have the same quality, you know, they have to choose the cheaper one, the lower price one. But if you are hubs or certified, your price can be 10% higher than your competitor. And the contractor still, um, the government procurement officer still can buy from you. So that's huge, okay? Uh, especially in the contracting, 
So this is a how to certify for the half zone. I really encourage you to certify um, as soon as possible. If you are a service disabled veterans, I uh, have uh, three percent set aside. Um, now SBA can help you. Uh, before you have to go through VA, now SBA can help you with the uh, certification. So please contact the Veterans Business Outreach Centers. Okay, now um, we call, talk about the regulations. Um, there is a FAR, Federal Acquisition Regulations website, uh, especially part 13, 14, and 15. Uh, you can learn about different ways um, how to, you know, how they make decision, what's the qualification. There are uh, simplified acquisition, sale bidding, and the contracting by negotiation. Means they, they don't have the deadline, so you can uh, negotiate with them um, at any time. So now we go to the serious one. Okay, now you certify, you're ready. Okay, um, you're you're ready to do the business. So how do you find those opportunities? The first one, uh, there is a micro, micro purchases. I mentioned if any contact more than $25,000, they have to post on the same. But if um, any purchase uh, less than $3,000, for example, our office hold event, we need to buy through you know, a lot of stationery, the name tag, everything. As long as it's less than $3,000, we don't have to post anywhere, okay? So that's, uh, that's a, a lot of uh, opportunities because a lot of the situation, we just need to buy something. So please contact those uh, local federal government agency. Uh, you don't have to go to Washington, D.C. Um, a lot of people say, oh, for federal contract, we have to go to D.C. You don't have to. Do you know that there are more than 120 federal government agency office in New York City? Contact the local office, okay? Uh, because the budget, actually, the, the uh, office can make decision, you know, whom to buy from and what to buy. So you should contact them, okay? Uh, and uh, the only requirement is uh, they use government credit card, so you have to be able to accept a credit card. But I think now have no problem with that. The other uh, place that you should uh, go to uh, is to go to GSA. GSA uh, General Services Administration, they are the office manage all the federal agencies property. They also hire a security, hire a cleaning company. So they have a database called GSA schedule. So please go to their website and try to go to, they have a monthly um, you know, training for you. Uh, so please uh, learn about that. So you can deal with all the government agency if your industry is related to that. Okay, now the second thing is you should try to find those subcontracting opportunities. Other than those um, you know, uh, solicitation on the same.gov, uh, you should look for subcontracting opportunity, especially uh, you haven't got any, haven't working with uh, government yet, okay? So um, prime contractor, if they get contract more than $700,000 or construction industry get, um, more than $1 million contract, they have to sub out. So they are looking for a subcontractor. Uh, so this is subnet is the website you can find the opportunities. Also, the other web uh, website is directory of all the federal government prime contractors. So that's nationwide, okay? So you can find those um, prime contractor, uh, send them your, have a ready statement, uh, tell them you're interested to um, work with them. Uh, so that's like, for example, like people send out a resume to, uh, to, uh, to get the opportunity. But if you're looking for the opportunity now, okay, uh, you should go to the subnet, but you need to prepare. So the other things that, um, you know, 
Alina and I talking about you know, business can team up uh, to get a big contractor. SBA, we also have a main pro project uh, program. So um, some business, though, they already got contract. Um, you know, they, they, they are willing to be the main uh, to help the new business to get government contract. Uh, you have to um, participate in that program. And then uh, for the teaming up to get a contract, you need to select an attorney with experience. That's very important, okay, uh, to protect yourself. So um, I list uh, the, you know, what you should do uh, if you need to or want to team up with other uh, business, but uh, try to um, get a mentor. Um, SBA doesn't match making for you, you know, for you. So you need to participate in event or find a prime contractor or you know, business that uh, they already got government contract and they are willing to be the mentors. So now uh, this uh, just a review what you need to do. The first one, register in the same .gov. So do that. As, as, um, as long as you already have the text ID number, you can um, upload your own, we, we call register, okay? Register your business on, at uh, same.gov. The second one, talk to the business counselors. Um, the next slide will show you um, who can help you. And then you check out those procurement websites that I mentioned, and then try to find those opportunities, uh, which agency and prepare bids and offers. The last one is the key point. You have to market your business to the government agency. Okay, now let's talk about, uh, this is for assistance, uh, PTEC, Procurement Technical Assistance Center. We have three PTEC in New York. Uh, you can find them, one in Manhattan, one in um, Bronx, and one in Queens, okay. Um, you have to um, have, you know, uh, make appointment with them on their mailing list because they will be the one that they hold. They invite government agency there to hold uh, to the hold the event for you to meet with those uh, government agency. Okay, so it's very important you contact them. Each um, federal, you know, agency they have. Uh, Small Business Advocacy Office can help you, if, especially if you are certified for any of those uh, certifications. Now we talk about the marketing, okay? A lot to learn, a lot to do, okay? So as a business owner, um, do not just work in the business. You have to work on the business. Means that you, or you can um, designate some someone uh, have to come out to uh, make good relationship with those government agencies, need your product or services, uh, attend their events, let them know about you, let them know that you are willing, uh, you really want to do business with them uh, and you are a reliable um, you know, business to work with. So those are very important uh, because they don't know you they don't know you are existing. So you have to approach them, let them know you, okay? And especially if you have any certification, they, they are looking for you and uh, know how to buy from you. They are looking for someone, uh, you know, easygoing and uh, you know, simplicity uh, to work with, very important. So there are three um, key federal officials that you should develop a um, relationship with them. Uh, they have different terms. Uh, for different agency, they have different position. Some call small business specialists, um, program managers, or contracting officers. Okay. Identify your customers. Uh, do not waste your time um, just on those agency. Maybe they never uh, need your product and services. So focus on those agency. They need your product and services. And uh, the second one, research their requirement. Okay. Um, maybe they, um, they, they haven't used something like you can provide. 
um, but you have to find those one uh, in your niche and your priority, okay? Uh, prioritize for your business. You have to learn the regulation and they show the contract office that you are a good match for them. They are looking for somebody to help them, okay? So I interview more than 100 procurement officer. They give me four, uh, you know, four things they are looking for. Pleasantly to work with. Assistant, they told me, please tell them do not give up. Usually you need at least one year to get your first contract, okay? Do not give up. If you be rejected for your first uh, bidding, uh, just politely ask them whether you should improve uh, maybe your proposal or the you know what do you need to improve uh, to get the contract. And uh, when you contact them, please to be professional and positive. They are looking for somebody to make their you know uh, jobs easier and get good product and services. So you have to attend um, the events. Um, you know, for example, you want to um, work with sell to SBA, you have to let us know you. So if we have events, you should come to let us uh, meet with you. Bring your capability statement. Uh, so you know, um, then uh, they, they will be clearly and save your information. So if you see any events have procurement or matchmaking, you have to be there. Okay, that's the chance you can meet those uh, agencies, procurement officers or representatives. And then you, you get uh, their business card, you give them your business card, then you have to follow up, okay? Do not just waste those uh, leads in your drawer. So follow up, there are different uh, procurement officers, they have different personalities. Some of them, they are welcome, you contact them more often, some don't. So please just ask them, okay? Uh, so what are those buyers looking for? High quality, okay? So emphasize the quality of your product and services and reliable supplier and the fair prices, okay? Uh, so if you have any certification, um, that can help them. And simplicity, okay, it means uh, very easy, uh, pleasant to work with you. So there are more more ways uh, to uh, you know, to do the marketing. You can call them, okay, uh, network, uh, even with uh, other vendors. We already mentioned that. Get help with the experts from PTEC, from Small Business Development Center, Women Business Center. Um, and uh, also uh, look for subcontracting opportunities, especially in the beginning, uh, use direct mail or email. Uh, I know a lot of businesses like to call, okay? But if you um, make phone calls, um, they don't remember you. So it's easier to send an email, you have the records, they can uh, remember you easier. Uh, target. Uh, the government's field office, I mentioned you don't have to go to DC, you can go to New York City, so have more than 120 government agency offices here. And uh, you have to prepare to do business the way government does. Means, you know, um, they are very busy, okay? So for example, if they send you a um, question, uh, you have to answer right away, okay? Uh, but if you send them uh, a request or something, maybe you have to be patient uh, to wait for uh, some time, okay? So just have to uh, learn about, you know, each agency a little bit different. When you see a solicitation, uh, you, you can request or download a bid package, uh, or you can get more specification uh, and the uh, drawing and understand the regulations, okay? So I already mentioned there are different ways, uh, depends on the, you know, you know, the contract amount. So when you read the solicitation, I, my suggestion is more than one time and more than one, per, one people, one person uh, to, to read that. You can request a procurement history, you have to. 
you must attend a privy meeting and walk through. Uh, if you're not clear about something, you have to ask the question. Uh, also, uh, proofread your proposal and submit it on time. Um, I saw a lot of uh, business, they all submit their proposal the last day. Computer cannot take it, uh, so they cannot submit on time. So should submit at least three days before the deadline. Do not wait uh, until the last day. So have to be responsive and responsible. It's better to have designate one uh, staff in your office to deal with the government uh, agency. Okay, so make sure they can be responsive. Okay, have more here. You have know your market. Um, you know, so research those target agent budget. Um, that's very important. Even they need your product or services, but you know, government agency they have budget. So if uh, the but you price too high, they cannot uh, they cannot buy from you. Uh, know where to get critical help. That's very important, especially in the beginning. Take care of the basic, um, like you know, you have to show your financial uh, statement and register everywhere you can. Um, for example, you should um, get city, uh, you know, states, uh, governments too. Go to each of the agency. Um, they all have the contact uh, contact person. Uh, try to you know subscribe their information so every day you can get up the information and develop personal relationship with those agencies. Uh, start small, okay? Um, now, uh, the last things I want to uh, tell you, you need to prepare uh, three marketing tools. The first one is the elevator pitch, uh, 20 to 30 seconds when you meet those uh, procurement officers, how to uh, introduce your business uh, in the positive way and the brief. Number two, prepare one page capability statement. Uh, next slide, I will show you the example. Um, and also, you know, normally the agency maybe will have um, a few, five uh, business, ask them to uh, make the you know, full presentation. Uh, so you have to do the homework before you go. That's very um, critical. You have to know the audience. You have to be focused on what they are interested, what they're concerned and the brief, okay? And you have to stand out from the crowd. That is the art. So this is a um, capability statement. You need to have all this information in that. It's like a resume for your business. So I will show you two examples. This is a, a female veterans engineering company. Uh, usually we say one page for your capability statement. So she already have a lot of contact. So she has a lot of information, she, but she was smart. This is one page, but have four sides. So the cover, then the capability statement, then the photos of the projects she has uh, completed and also testimonial. Okay, so she, um, this is a very good one. Uh, this is a marketing company owned by a Native American uh, lady. Uh, during the pandemic, she got uh, you know, several government uh, contracts to help the uh, government office uh, to do the marketing, hold the event, um, you know, because um, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, government tried to help the community. They need the marketing. They need help to, um, to deliver the information to the community. So this is a good one too. Then um, finally, just want to tell you, you know, government is looking for quality small business to meet its need. So you are helping the government. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, you want to uh, do a good job. The second one, marketing, okay, is, 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 a, is an art. It's not a rocket science. So when you deal with different agencies, different procurement officers, um, you have to know the difference. Build your reputation. Okay, if you do if you do a good job for your first contract, um, then you will you know, get much many many more 
And uh, now we use our technology, especially the cybersecurity is very important. The final slide, uh, this is our governance of fiscal year calendar. So uh, federal government start from October 1st to September 30th. So the first quarter, now is the first quarter, you just you know, learn about uh, the regulation and build a good relationship with the agency. So from January to June, uh, the two quarters, that's the time that you negotiate with them, you really contact them. Uh, and then uh, the last quarters, uh, June, July to September, uh, a lot, lot of, uh, a lot of agency. They have some uh, monies left. So they have to. They can buy something. So the last minute offers. I saw a lot of business get that. So uh, this is the best time uh, to contact them. So I wish everybody uh, contact them, build a good relationship, and get contact in twenty twenty three. Okay, this conclude my uh, presentation today, Elena. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, you know what? Um, I know we have a hard stop. I, can we just do like two or three questions? Right. Yeah. Because I okay. have next meeting. Yes. Okay. Uh, can an MB certified company with the city also bid on federal contracts? Yes. Um, separated. Okay. City and um, you, you should certify city and state first. Uh, I know they just have one page more to certify the other one. But federal is totally separated. So you have to separate to certify that. And we call 8A uh, for minority and uh, women on business. They are separated. Okay. Does the mentor protege program apply for sole proprietors or single LLC? Uh, for government contract, they don't, um, all the different business uh, structure can apply. Okay. Okay. Uh, if an uh, MWBA entity that ends up a sub to a primary, does the primary in some way get credit or advantage in subcontracting a certified entity? The prime contractor? Um, I don't know uh, what's the benefit for the prime contractor, okay. but by federal, it's by law. If they get contract more than $700,000, they have to sub out. That's the requirement. Okay, um, everyone, just so you know, it is being recorded and we will get the PowerPoint presentation. Um, what, uh, every, someone asked about, you know, what's the website to find the hub zone again? Everyone's gonna get the PowerPoint presentation as long as you right. RSVP'd on, on, to me um, on the website, you'll get a copy of this. If not, email me if you came in through a recommendation. Um, I wanted, I don't want to take up Manly. She is, a, a, she has another um, meeting. Thank you so much, Manly. Amazing. Everyone is, I know, huge support on this. Had so many people on. And you know what? We did this about six or eight weeks ago, and we're getting more people on, which means that there is a definite interest for it. Manly, thank you again. I don't want to take up too much time. And we appreciate it. Manly, you can go off. I'm just going to close it up. But thank you so much. For those okay. you know who are interested in connecting with our database of 30,000 different business and civic leader, join us Tuesdays at 10 o'clock online networking, Thursdays afternoon, um, 2 o'clock online networking. We have we um, also support it by in-person networking. So we have a couple of things going on. We have a fall foliage. Uh, First Republic is hosting it at the end of the month. We have the uh, meet the lenders at the end of the month. Uh, so take a look at chamber.nyc. If you have any questions, you want to become a member of the chamber, email me. Love to have you. Those who are members, we so greatly appreciate your support. So we, you know what, we can't do these without, you know, the people that are supporting the chamber. Thank you everyone so much. Have a great weekend. If you need anything, email me, info at chamber.nyc or helena at chamber.nyc. And again, you'll get a copy of the PowerPoint presentation and it will be on live uh, Chamber TV. Have a great day, everyone.